Good morning, good morning to each and every one of us. Um, we're going to get a star of praise and worship. Right now, we're going to do our welcome prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for coming and showing us that we can come in here and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you, Father. Father God, if the ones that's on their way, put them in grace. Father God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Now we're going into praise and worship with our children.
Catch on five minutes who we are with Miss Latoya. Good morning. The Apostle Paul stated that the work of the Christian church is, is to build up the body of Christ that all may become mature Christians. Ephesians 4 11 through 13. Catch on five ministries is committed to fulfilling this scripture. Our mission is to draw people to Christ and enable them to continually grow into being like Christ. Catch on Fire Ministries is to compose and dis disciples and lead by disciples. Catch on Fire Ministries is an affiliated church of God, Prophecy Buckley's St. Kitts. This church falls under the leadership of Bishop Lionel Philip Webb. Worship time, Sunday, 9.30, Sunday morning worship. Wednesday, 5.30, Discipleship Class Fellowship. Saturday, 11 a.m., Praise and Worship Team Practice. Welcome, visitors. Our offering, Investing in the Kingdom. Offering praying. Father God, thank you this morning for bringing everybody out this morning. Thank you for those who have in their heart to give and those who can't. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Ways to give online, catch on 5 ministriesorg Zell, CLFM1013 at protomail.com. Offering scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. Remember this, whoever sows fairly will also reap fairly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now we're going into our scripture reading with uh, Mrs. Latoya. Scripture reading, 1 Kings 17, 1 through 6. Oh, 1 through 16. Now Elijah and Tishbite from, I don't know if it is, Tishbe, Tishbe in Galilee said to Ahab, as the Lord, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who, whom serve there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at the Lord. At my word, sorry, y'all. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I will have directed ravens to supply, to supply you with food there. So he, did what, so he did what the Lord told him. He went to Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up because he had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply, you, to, to supply with food. So he went to Zarephath, where he came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, 
would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she, go, as she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for, for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jar of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was, was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Yeah, thank you, Latoya, for those scripture reading. And uh, now we're going into the psalm of introduction song, sermon of the introduction song. sermon with our only pastor, Dr. Novella. Uh, today we will, I'll be speaking on giving our all to Jesus. It was beautifully read by Ms. Toya, um, what we'll be speaking on. Let's move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for another day to stand in your presence and lift you up and worship you. 
and give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask, dear God, for your presence to continue to be with us. We ask, dear God, that the worship will be everything that you would have it to be. We thank you, dear God, because, you know, you've made us marvelous in your eyes. And we pray, dear God, that you'll touch the word, that will go forth with power, that chains will be broken, that all of us will come to know you more in the beauty of holiness. Amen. And we're in the book of First Kings. If you go to the Old Testament, you'll find there's First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and Chronicles. And these all record the history of the nation of Israel. Israel was God's chosen people. He called Abraham out of Ur, and he says, "I'm going to make you a great nation." You're going to be more than the stars of the sky. You're going to be more than the sand and the seas. And the book of 1 Kings that we're looking at is so called because it talks about all the kings of Israel except Saul. Saul ends in the, in the book of Samuel. And it really starts off talking about David's last days because most of what David did is covered in the book of Samuel. Before they were translated, First and Second Kings used to be one book, and they were just continued like second a continuation of what happened in First and Second Samuel, and so you could say it looks at three different eras. It looks at when Israel was united, and he had the great King David. Then it looks at when Israel and Judah became two nations, and then the and and Israel got carried away into captivity by Assyria. And then he looks at when Judah was taken away into captivity and exiled by Babylon. It is believed that Kings was written by one person. And they weren't just writing to say how great Israel was. They were writing to show the lessons, show what it means to live for God. Because it didn't just talk about the kings, it talked about the prophets and how God spoke to the prophets. And it says that, shows that when you're faithful to God, it's different. In the first Kings we we're dealing with, the two men that stand out are Solomon and Elijah. And first Kings spans a period of approximately 120 years. It begins with the death of David, and it ends with the death of Ahab. And in that period of time, Israel passes from prosperity on the godly David to a time of wretchedness under the wickedness of Ahab. And when we talk about Ahab, they say Ahab was the most wicked king that Israel had ever seen. Omri was his father. And when Omri became king, they said Omri was so wicked. And then Ahab, who became king after him, followed in the le legacy of Jer Jeroboam, who was the first king of Israel. And he said Jeroboam was given to the idolatry. He actually set up a golden calf to stop people from going to the temple. And Ahab was far worse than Jeroboam. It is said that Ahab, he married the wicked queen Jezebel. And he was so wicked, he built a temple to worship her false god Baal in the capital of Israel, God's chosen people, Samaria. And Jezebel was committed to making the worship of Baal the worship of the nation of Israel. The people who God had brought out of Egypt, who Moses had said, let my people go. She was determined that they were going to serve this false god, Baal. Baal was supposed to be the god of good weather and prosperity. He would bring rain and good crops and make you rich, you know. And so after Ahab had set up Israel to do evil, God raised up a prophet. God always raised up somebody. And he raised up Elijah the Tishbite. And Elijah, 
went down to Samaria. It's like he went up to Washington, to the White House, and said, let me talk to President Biden. He went up to Samaria and said, I've come here to see the king. Where is Ahab? And when Ahab came out, he told him, you're such a wicked person, and you are so blatantly disrespecting the God of the universe. I'm going to speak, and from this moment, no rain is going to fall. And you're not going to see rain again in the nation of Israel until I say so. Because I'm speaking for the, on behalf of the Lord. And after that, because, you know, this is like if you go up and you tell President Biden, you know, I'm going to do something about you. Everybody's going to start hunting you down. Elijah had to go into hiding. And God tell him, I got you. Don't worry. Go down by the brook. Stay there. You don't have to come out of hiding. Because Ahab is king. So all he had to do was say, I'm looking for this man. And just like how Biden would have to say, I'm looking for you. And everybody in all of America would be looking for you. So he had to go into hiding. And so he went by the brook Sherit. And the scripture says that ravens brought him bread and, bread and meat every day, morning and evening. Now I'm here to tell you, this might sound simple to you, but ravens were considered unclean as they were supposed to be considered unclean because they live off what we call here in Tennessee roadkill. They only ate dead animals and nastiness, garbage. The ravens were so bad, they didn't even feed their own young. When they had the birds, they abandoned them. That's how wicked these ravens were and how filthy they were. And they brought food every morning and every evening because they had to obey the God of the universe. And they brought good food too. Because the scripture, the Hebrew word that's translated as bread means meat. Nuts, all kinds of good things. In fact, it is believed that they were bringing this out of the palace. Because you know, birds sweep down, they steal it, and they're gone. You can't do nothing about it. <laughs> you know? So they were saying that Ahab, Elijah was in hiding from Ahab, and it, Elijah was eating from Ahab's table. That's how God does. <laughs> you know? That's who, because he was the only one who had good food all the time. And so God was making sure, as he will do the same for us. He said, I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. They're going to watch us eat well in the name of Jesus. So we don't know how long Elijah stayed at the brook. But we do know that we are here in this story and the brook has gone dry. You know, this is natural. If no rain fall, as mighty as that river looks down there at the riverside, it's going to go dry. We need rain. You know, uh, so we're here at the brook. Because of what Elijah said, no rain is falling. He's working for God. He's doing God's will, but he's run out of water. Now, if you study, and I read this and I was amazed, they said the human body can go as long as 40 days without eating. You know, you don't really need food even though we think so. But if you don't drink water for three days, you will die. We cannot do without water. So this is why, this wasn't any ordinary thing. Elijah had to find water or die right there. And he was called of God. He was walking in God's will. But a change, he had to make a change. Sometimes it's going to happen like that. You know, uh, sometimes you think that the job we're on, we're going to work this job until we die. You know, until we retire and we're going to get a good pension. And then the company goes bankrupt. And we don't know how we're going to make it. But we know, like Elijah knew, that it's God who's our provider. 
We sang it this morning. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. So God, Elijah didn't start to panic. He didn't start to fuss. Lord, what you doing? Uh, you know, here am I, I'm run out of water. He was confident that the God of the universe was able to provide. We're going to be in situations, and we may be in situations right now, where it look like all hope is lost. We don't know where we go from here. But the brook has dried up. The friends who said they'd be there, we can't find them. But in the name of Jesus, God is coming through for us. Jehovah Jireh is who we put our trust in. You know, we're not going to stop praising him. We're going to keep praising him. The scripture says that Jacob had two wives and he didn't like Leah at all. And Leah kept trying. Rachel couldn't have any children. And Leah kept having children for Jacob, and Jacob didn't care. When somebody don't like you, they don't like you. It don't matter what you do. And it took Leah a while to realize they didn't matter how many sons she had for Jacob. He still was going to prefer Rachel, who didn't have any children. And the scripture records that Leah says when she had one of the latest ones, she said, Jacob don't love me. But I'm going to praise the Lord anyhow. And she named that son Judah. And it is out of Judah that our Lord came. The lineage of Judah. When she learned to give God the praise. It don't matter who don't love us. It don't matter what they say about us. We're worshiping God. We can't wait till the battle is over. We got to shout now. It don't care how dry the brook is. We give God the praise. In the midst of every situation. That's where we are. And the scripture said, said him, go down to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. And this seemed like an ordinary thing till you understand what God was telling Elijah. He was saying, like he, he said, to, he was, like he was saying to us, get up out of Clarksville, go down into Mexico. Go down into a place where you don't speak the language, where you don't belong. He was sending him down into Gentile enemy territory. No self-respecting Jew would go down to Sidon. They wouldn't be found among the Gentiles. You know, God was taking Elijah outside of the kingdom of Israel. And you have to understand that the God we serve is a God of strategy. It might not make any sense to us, but wh I looked at it and I realized that scripture says that, that the great military strategy, Sun Shur, in the art of war, and they studied this, all military generals studied right now to today. If you want to be the general in the US, Army, you have to study this book, The Art of War. And he said, if you're planning to go north, the enemy must be convinced that you're going south. God was taking Elijah to where Ahab didn't have any authority. It's like Biden, it's why you see all the old Western movies, they're running over to Mexico. <laughs> you know, in Texas, they're running for their life, cross the River Grande, and then they're over there waving at law enforcement, because you ain't got no authority over here. So that's what God was doing with Elijah, taking him. He said, go down there and stay there. He didn't say, just show your face and come back. He said, stay there. You know, and even here, when you look back, this is wisdom. I, one of the lessons, one of the stories that have always fascinated me is Harriet Tubman. And they said whenever she set the slaves free, wherever, in Virginia, wherever, they would expect her to go not. She always came first to Tennessee. And she would not come out of the woods until she got to Tennessee. 
Here, she went further south. She went opposite. And that's why they never caught her. Because she didn't do things like how they expected her to do it. She was walking by the grace of God. You must never let your enemy know what you're actually planning to do. And we, you don't know sometimes who's your enemy. Be careful who you tell what. So that they can't use it against us in the name of Jesus. The devil can't read minds. A lot of fake people calling, how you doing? And you know, I had one who kept asking me a couple weeks ago, you ain't lost your job yet. I said, the devil is a liar. Who tell you that I'm going to lose my job? I said, oh, they laid off some people. And you as well? You know, that was, and I was like, this person actually pretending to be my friend. I was like, no, in the name of Jesus, I'm still there. I don't know, man, close the door that God opened for us. No man can get rid of us in the name of Jesus. And sometimes what God tells us to do doesn't make any sense. And I'm convinced that sometimes we lose out on the blessing because we want God to bless us a certain way. We want people to, you know, suppose Elijah had said, I can't eat from these nasty ravens. Do you know who I am? I'm the prophet of the Most High God. No, he would have been dead long ago. You got to take the blessing, however the blessing is coming. I read a story in the New York Times in March of this year, and I was led to talk about it. And I've been around a lot of Christians, and a lot of us, the church is full of women, single women. We tend to be the ones out front. And sometimes we get together and I'd hear them say, oh, you know, the Lord is going to send me a bishop. And, you know, this man went around America. He's in jail right now in Texas. They gave him three years. And they say he married 10 women. Didn't marry, even bother to divorce any of them. And he told them he was a bishop and the Lord had sent him, sent him to them and he would marry them. Don't work until they kick him out and then find somebody else who do the same. And he called him, say he had PhD and THD, you know. <clears throat> Sometimes we put ourselves in trouble when we want to tell God how to bless us. You know, I'm sure that maybe God could send somebody, but they might not have the title bishop. You know, that's the thing. But it doesn't matter because if they know the love of God, they can love us how God they're supposed to love us. So this is what it's about. You know, God wants to bless us. He wants to keep us safe. But we have to be willing to go along with his methodology. You know, God might send somebody who we don't think look right, or look right, or doing things right, but that's the one God want to use to bless us. And so this is what it was with Elijah. First, God start off by sending him the ravens. Then they tell him, go down there. In, 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 in Sidon. Go down there to the Gentile. And it wasn't just Gentile territory. It was where Jezebel was from. It was where her father was from. This was the center of idol worship. It's like Nashville is the center for country music. You go to the Grand Ole Harp Opry. This was where the devil was definitely in power. And God told him, go down there and stay there. Didn't make any sense. If you're looking from it, from a personal human perspective. But we have to learn to listen to what God is saying. He does all things well. You know, it doesn't matter what. He does all things well. When Paul and Silas were in prison, getting a beat down. And you, everybody was like, they started to worship. 
If they hadn't started to worship, the prison doors would not have been set free for everybody else. It looked like something had gone wrong in their life. But it was the best thing that could have happened to the jailer and everybody else. We got to walk with God. How God wants us to walk with him. And God said, told somebody, I told a widow woman to look after you. Again, this is another crazy, irrational thing by, by people's standards. Widows and orphans were the most broke, the poorest, the worst of people. In fact, if you read the Bible, there has about five scripture verses where Moses said, look after the widows. Look after the orphans. In the New Testament, we find um, James saying pure religion is to look after the widows and the orphans. You know, if anything, it should have been Elijah looking to take care of her. This was absolutely impossible. But God, this is on the level of God telling David, go out there with five stones and take down Goliath. And God is saying, I don't need any help to take care of you. All the glory, all the power belongs to me. I can do the impossible. I made man out of nothing. I called everything out of nothing. I said, let there be and there was. I am the God of the impossible. You must never think that we made it because of our strength. That's why we into this song that says, you made a way. When our backs was against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we are standing here today only because God made a way. He moved mountains. He made walls fall down. I'm here today and we're all here today because God is able and he specializes in it. The widow of Zarephath was who was destined to look after Elijah. And so Elijah got up and went. It was a long journey. It wasn't no next door. It wasn't like he was even going to Nashville. Like I said, it's like he had to go down to Mexico City, to the capital of Sidon, Zarephath. And he went there. He didn't say, God, you sure? Let me think about this. I'm not sure, you know, I'm risking everything. If he had thought about it, he would have winded up dead. That's what we have to do when God says jump. We just have to start jumping and keep jumping until God says to stop jump. That's what it's about. And, you know, <laughs> the scripture says he came to the city gate and he found a widow collecting sticks. That means she didn't even have a servant to bring her wood. You had to collect the sticks to cook with, to keep yourself warm. She ain't had nobody. She didn't have anybody. She had to do it herself. You know, maybe Elijah might have thought, well, maybe like Steve Jobs' widow is a widow too. But she's one of the richest women in the world. She worth $20.7 billion. And God's saying widow, but he can't really mean a widow. He's going to send me to a widow who got money. Not this, not this one who just as poor and broke and badly off as I am. That that's what the Lord did. Because all the glory, all the honor belongs to him. And so he went... He did not know where he could have sent God, could have sent Elijah a picture. Uh, this is how she looks. Take your Google map and go to the right spot. He was walking and moving, strictly in the anointing of Jesus. And so he met the woman collecting sticks. The right woman in the right place, right there, waiting and doing getting ready to do what she needed to do. And Elijah, <laughs> he never saw this woman before in his life. Ask her for water. There's a drought in the land. Water was more precious than gold. Because you can't eat, as we, I, we always like to say, you can't eat the money. Though my grandmother used to say, do not 
ever budget on your belly. Make sure you eat properly because you need to stay alive and you need only food can do that. Don't watch you have so much money on the bank and you, I have never forgotten when I was in England, one, somebody told me that their uncle who was a multimillionaire died of malnutrition because he wouldn't eat properly. He was so busy saving his money. And that's what I'm here to tell you. The woman who had to eat and, and they had to drink. So Elijah is asking her. He's come a mighty long way. And he probably didn't stop to talk to anybody. He said he needed some water. And this woman, he was asking for the most precious thing she had. Didn't blink. She turned to go and get it for him. That's how you know she was in God. She didn't say, who are you? Who do you think you are? You know, I don't know anything about you. She didn't have any stories to give. But then he went further. He said, and bring me, a, bring me some bread too. I think I find Elijah have a lot of nerves. This in the midst of famine and drought. He's asking this poor woman for everything. And she said to him, I can't give you that. She didn't mind the water, but she said, I can't give you that. And she acknowledged they were down in Gentile territory where Jezebel's father was king, where they worshiped Baal. And he said to him, as sure as your God lives. That's why God sent Elijah to her. It's this proof that we can worship God in the midst of anything and anywhere. If you want to serve God, you can serve God. Because right there, she said, I know that you serve the one true God. I know that you are not this bell who can do nothing for us. I know you serve Adonai, El Shaddai, Elohim. That you know Jehovah Jireh. And she said, I can't give you the bread. And she said, why? Because she had made up her own story. She said, I have a son, but it was a little boy. And she said, I'm going to go home. I got a little bit of oil. I got a little bit of flour. I got to make two loaves of bread. And then we're going to eat it together. And we're going to lay down there and die. Because that was the reality. Nobody cared anything about her. She was, but the God we serve cares. And from far away, hundreds of miles away, he sent somebody to tell her, as he's telling us, I'm with you. You shall not die. You're going to live and you're going to declare the works of the Lord because you've given me of the best of your life. And Jesus spoke about her in the New Testament. Hundreds of miles, Elijah came. There were a lot of widows in Israel. And they were righteous. They were descended from Abraham. And God passed all of them. Wasn't interested in none of them. Went down into then child territory. To pick up one who meant Jesus. That's what God is saying. That if we give him the best of our lives, it doesn't matter what situation comes our way, he's going to bail us out. And he will do the impossible. And he told the woman, don't be afraid. I'm telling all of us today, don't be afraid. Situation's going to come. The brook dried up. He didn't stop the brook from try, drying up and give them endless water. For, the brook dried up. And God told Elijah to tell her, every day you're going to find flour in there. Every day you're going to find oil to make the bread. Give us this day our daily bread. God didn't give her a warehouse full of flour. Because he know if he had done that too, they would have robbed her off and run away with it. She was an old poor woman. Just enough to keep going. And that's what God is giving us every day. 
our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. What is it you need? My daily bread is different to yours. What do you need? What do you need God to do for you? What do we need us to God to do for us? He said, even Solomon in all his glory was not, didn't look as good as the lilies of the field. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. You know, sufficient unto the days, the evil thereof. He said, just worry about today. Don't even worry about today. He said, I'm going to look for you. You've had so much destruction come true. On the, mo on the TV, you see what happened in Florida. Five, five states, all kind of problems. And I stand by what I've always said. Have you seen one dead bird? I have never, I've lived through hurricanes. I've never seen a dead bird. I don't know where God sheltered them. I'm here to tell you that we mean more to him than those birds. And the storms of life are coming. Life comes at us hard. Those of us who have lived, you could ask, so, uh, life comes hard. You wake up today and things that you never expected are staring you in your face. You know, I, it's just this week I was talking to my mother about last year when I lost that job with that company unexpectedly and I didn't want to lose it. And I'm so grateful now because that company is doing so badly and has laid off so many people. Look what the Lord has done. He's a shelter in the time of storm. And so in conclusion, give God your best. I can only believe that this woman was truly serving God. She didn't listen to the people around her who said, oh, Baal is our God. You know, she was serving. She had seen the goodness of God. And even though things were going wrong, she was sure she was about to die. She was still saying, you are your God is the living God. She wasn't changing her mind because things had gone south. She was sticking with God. The God who's brought us here is not about to leave us. Y'all sing the song beautifully. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. He didn't leave us along the way. He's not going to leave us now. I want us to dream again. I want us to live again. I want us to believe again. I want us to know that God is doing a great work in our lives. I don't have a, what should I say? I've looked back over my life and I have sometimes a lot of regrets for the things that I've done that don't make any sense. But I do know and I pray for all of us that we will give God the best of our lives as we keep moving on in the name of Jesus because the loving God that we serve and he's a God of love will come, he'll do whatever it takes to bring us out all right in the name of Jesus. He'll do whatever it takes and he's not only, I'll never forget, I used to go to this church in, in New York in the 80s, and this very tall woman from Barbuda would testify. We used to have testimony service. And every time she testified, she said the same thing. God is not only able, he's willing. She said, a lot of people willing, but they're not able. They can't help you. And she said, a lot of people who are able to help you, not willing to help you. But God is both. And whatever is the situation in our life, let's give God the best of our years. Let's give God the best of our years. Let's give God the best of our time, the best of our talent in Jesus' name. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him. I can tell you, 
I don't know why God, and I'll probably cut this out. I don't know why God has brought me to Clarksville. I've come for many miles. And just when I was about to give up, he brought Miss Cat into my life. And again, when I was about to give up, he brought you, Miss Toya. You know, I don't know why, but I do know one thing, that both of you are serving God all the way out. And that you are seeking to know God more. And as I know that the things I've asked God for, the dreams that I don't want to give up on anymore, when I was a child, I always said I wanted to build a home for children who are abandoned so that if you don't want your child or you don't have a pla any place to go, you could bring that child. And I thought, and for many years I've said, it's too late, I'll never be able to do it. But I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming again. I'm calling it out again in the name of Jesus. There's so much need in the world, you know, I hear a lot, I have a lot of friends who go to therapy, and that's good. God gave man wisdom. But I do believe that if we do what Jesus said, and he said we must feed the hungry, clothe the naked, minister to the sick, visit who's in prison, and do that to the least of the brethren, I believe a lot of healing would come. I believe that the focus on ourselves, our problems, our issues, what people do to us, is what's making us sick. If we would get up and care for somebody other than ourselves and our four, it would change our lives. It would change the lives of others. And it would be what Jesus said. We would see Jesus in them. We see Jesus in the mean streets, in the people. It's about caring. I don't care, how should I say, I don't care anymore about a lot of things. You know, somebody asked me the other day about life insurance, and I told them, I don't have any. I already told my children not to expect anything. <laughs> you know, if they all, you know, I'm, they're probably better off with me alive than dead because nothing coming their way. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to see people in need and have money on the bank. I'm not going to do it in the name of Jesus. I don't need a lot of shoes. I remember one of the richest women I ever met said to me, you could only wear one pair of shoes at a time, no matter how many you have. You could only wear one outfit at a time, no matter how many you have. And if you meet people who really have money, they don't have any design or anything. They don't name, we have name brand anything. I'm telling you this to tell you that live for Jesus. Give of your best to Jesus. Worship him with everything you have, in every way that you can. And I promise you, that God is going to do a great work in us, just like he did with Elijah, just like he did. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a blessed week. Thanks for joining us.